vetting and borders. There's two sides to every border wall. Those who strive to justify illegal entry into the United States go to great lengths in debate, and they're likely to quote the following verses from the Bible to do so. When a stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. The stranger who resides with you shall be to you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. For you were aliens in the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. Now, the scripture certainly addresses an important issue here in regards to fairness to all of mankind. However, one cannot paint a complete picture of reason based on one or two Bible verses. Later on in Jewish history, aliens from other countries and tribes often became a threat to not only the Jewish religion, but also national security. At one point in Judges, chapter 12, 1 through 6, the Israelis used a code password, a shibboleth, to sort out some unwanted guests. And how it works was like this. It was known that this group could not pronounce the word shibboleth correctly, so when they failed the test, they were immediately apprehended. Then, later in history, during the restoration of Israel, during the days of Nehemiah and Ezra, there were many foreigners that posed a threat to the restoration project in Jerusalem. Some came as friends, hoping to be accepted, but Nehemiah saw through their deceit and he run them off. Their enemies used many means by which to harass the builders, to such an extent that those building the wall had to carry weapons for their own protection. When we get to the New Testament, we see many illustrations of vetting in God's kingdom. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. That's in John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 1. Then he went on to say, I am the door of the sheep. Then in chapter 14, verse 6, he reinforced the illustration by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. His vetting process is quite thorough. In the Gospel of Matthew, there's a chapter which starts with the famous words, Judge not, lest you be judged. And usually that's as far as the liberals, the liberal critics, read. But it goes on to warn about false prophets and leaves us with a strict warning, quote, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now that's Matthew chapter 7. Notice how he points out the lawless nature of these people. It is for this reason we have to lock our cars and secure our homes. Some people have no manners or respect for the law. When there is no self-discipline, there must be imposed discipline. Anarchy has no place in a civil society, nor the kingdom of God. God is a God of order and discipline. The very word disciple is related to the word discipline, which implies rules and order. Good English is important if you're trying to fool the man. And Jesus is not the Savior if he swam the Rio Grande. Al Qatab is an Arab's record, but not like Steely Dan. And Isis not the savior if you read it Al Quran. She can flush out an imposter with her double edged sword. Light is more than oil when you're walking through the door. Her croissant is more than crescent. Hamatash is a villain's ear. Malachi is not my logic for the final word you hear. Shibboleth, 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 shibboleth.